So Thank my game changing secret is that you don't need to be everywhere on social media. All right, guys, I'm so excited that you guys join us today on the All Star Podcast. We are so excited to introduce you and for you to meet Bryani Jackson. Bryani is a marketing powerhouse with 25 years of sales and marketing magic under her belt. She's a pro at making businesses shine and boosting sales with ease. Bryani is here to help you say goodbye to marketing headaches with her free guide, Say Goodbye to Social Media Stress, in her game-changing course, Master Your Marketing in 30 Days. Guys, let's all welcome Bryani Jackson. Hi. Yay! Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us. Oh, I'm really pleased to be here and I'm really excited. And I actually think I need to clip that introduction and use it in all my marketing because it was fantastic. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I appreciate you for give, sharing with us all the information about all the amazing things that you do and how incredibly talented you are and being so open to helping others fill their buckets in that way, because I know that's the air uh, bucket that you're overflowing in. Yeah. And that's the whole concept of our podcast in that we share from our overflowing buckets. That's right. And I'm really, really passionate about creating success for all because I passionately believe that everybody deserves to be successful regardless of their qualifications, regardless of their background. And I'm probably in a very similar place to a lot of your listeners in that I'm just setting up my new business as well. So I'm in the very early infantile stages and I know how hard it can be and how hard you have to work. But I have learned a lot of things along the way in my previous um, businesses and previous jobs that I think can help people. So tell us about your background, like because you had a corporate job um, before transitioning to running your own business. Yeah. Tell us about that and how that sets you up for the success here. Yeah. So I actually am still freelancing in the corporate world because um, that's obviously paying my bills. <laughs> right. So I'm doing this alongside a um, corporate role still, but because I'm freelancing, it can be a little bit more flexible and it is part time. So, I, yeah, I've done 25 years in the pharmaceutical industry in sales and marketing. Wow. And I started right at the bottom um, in telesales and I worked my way up to being a senior brand manager. Um, so I have seen marketing at quite a high level, but I've also seen it done in the most complicated fashion you could possibly do it because people tend to overcomplicate marketing anyway. And if anyone's going to overcomplicate anything, it will be the pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> <laughs> but... I have got a shocking memory, so I cannot remember all the complicated processes. So I've kind of just done it my own way and got away with doing as little as possible, well, not in a lazy way, but as in as little as, as streamlining it as possible. Um, we call it efficient way. Efficient way, yes. An and efficient I've way. had a really successful career. So I think that's living proof that marketing does not need to be complicated. Yes. And mm. I agree with that. Um, I can complicate things with incredible ease. Yeah. And and it takes incredible talent and clarity to be able to pull out what's important and yeah. to keep that and the things that are actually going to bring in the revenue. That's so right. how do you how do you figure that out? How do you decipher what is like, oh, this is a great idea. This is a great idea. This is a great idea. This is what's going to lead to revenue. Yeah. So I think I've kind of learned it along the way because I think I've looked at what do I hate about marketing? Because I do have a love-hate relationship with it. So what do I hate about marketing? What do I love about you marketing? Do. Yeah. Yes. And I think the things that I love about are the things that actually get you results. So all marketing is, is communication. And we all do, we all communicate every day. We can all do it. But it's just making sure that you communicate with the right person at the right time and say the right thing. So the very core, the very essence of marketing is fully understanding what your business does, who it helps and who your ideal client is. And I know a lot of people kind of shudder when, when you talk about your ideal client because they say, but I want to 
serve everybody. I could serve everybody. My business is so great. It does everything for everyone. And that might be true, but the the truth is, is that we can't be everything to everyone when we're marketing. We have to hang our hat on something and say, this is the person that needs me most. Your ideal client will either be the person who is most likely to buy from you or the person you most want to work with. Because when we have our own business, we get to choose who we work with and we can say no to people. So you can kind of decide, right, is it going to be the person I most want to work with or the person who's most likely to buy from me? But that doesn't mean that only that person will ever buy from you. Lots of other people will see your messaging and see your business and make a decision that they want to work with you. But what it does mean is that you can tailor your messaging exactly to the person who's most likely to buy so that you really appeal to them. And that's a really sort of fundamental essence of marketing. So you, you, you said the three things at first, and I completely agree you said in marketing, you can't be everything to everybody. That's right. I think that that seems to be a solid blanket statement. Yeah. For almost every area of our life, doesn't it? Like if we're just going to pull that into everything, I think that that applies. Yeah. So you need to speak to the right person at the right time in the right way. So the right person is your ideal client. The right time, so when they're ready to buy from you. So there's a degree of nurturing first. You can't just run up to someone and say, buy from me, because they're going to run away and think you're a crazy lady. You need to nurture them first, and they need to get that no like trust factor. And then talking to them in the right way. The no like trust factor, which I love this because this really applies to everything. And I love that you're saying this because these are things that we've been saying in our industry that I've my that I've been in. And I love that you're saying the same thing in a slightly different way, but the exact same thing. Yeah, I love this because sometimes we hear the same thing said the same way a million times. And then when I hear you say it, it just clicks different it's like well that's really good to hear because that's kind of one of the fundamental things of my business is that i teach jargon free marketing so that i i hope that i'm saying everything to people in a way that people can easily understand because i absolutely hate jargon so there'll be no fancy names or terminology (laughs) oh i love that no fancy jargon yeah so in in the industry Here's a bit of fancy jargon for you. In the industry, they'll call this tone of voice. But all that means is that you reflect what you say reflects how that person speaks. So if that person is very professional and very, I don't know, let's say scientific, you would speak to them in a very professional and scientific way. If that person's very casual and jokey and maybe a little bit sweary, you would speak to them in exactly the same way. So you need to resonate with them. Oh, I love that. Um, and I and I'm gonna assume that in your previous life, and especially this was critical, and you probably really developed some strong phone um skills in the when you were doing what you said, the telly, yeah. right? That that's phone right. work because that's all audio. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And it's just about I mean, I say that, you know, people need to who buy from you need to have that no like trust factor. But actually, the people we sell to, we need to have that no like trust factor as well, because we need to understand them and understand what they want and what how we can help them. How do you help people develop that no like and trust So it's it's all about nurturing and that you can nurture people in different ways. And it really depends on what industry you're in. Um, My business is online, so obviously I do a lot of social media stuff, but I also have an email list as well because I like to speak more directly to people. And within that, you would nurture them. So you give them lots of value. So you give them. So for me, I'm a marketing business. So I tell them lots of things that will help them with their marketing. Um, And you shouldn't be afraid of giving away information for free because there will always be something that people need more that they will buy from you, but giving people value will, will make them realize that you're a, you know, a very, a person who works with honesty and integrity and you want to help them. Um, but the other way is say you weren't in an online industry and you wanted that no like trust factor, you would talk to people. So if somebody walked into your shop, you would start having a conversation with them. You wouldn't just run up to them waving a scarf and say, buy this scarf. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, unless you're in a festival or on the beach in a foreign I country, I don't know. But yes, exactly. You would get you walk up to them and you would ask them how they are and what they're looking for. And if they say I'm looking for a scarf, so what do you want your scarf for? Were you going to do an event? What's it for? You'd find out all the things they want to know, and then you'd pick out the scarf that's best for them. And it's no different in the online industry. You just do it in a different way. Oh, I love that. So you mentioned your mailing list has a ton of value. How do we get on your mailing list? So I have a free guide called Say Goodbye to Social Media Stress. And when you download this guide, you you will get entered onto my mailing list. But there's another reason why you should download this guide. It's absolutely packed full of value because I set myself a goal at the beginning of this year that for the whole of this year, all I would do would be give value to my potential clients. So in this guide, I give you my game-changing secret, which I'm going to give to your audience now as well. So my game-changing secret is that you don't need to be everywhere on social media. Just two platforms are enough, as long as it's the two platforms where your ideal client hangs out. So in this guide, I help you to identify which two platforms are best for your small business. And then on top of that, I give you eight types of posts that will really captivate your audience. And I give you 30 content ideas to really supercharge your social media this month. So it's packed with value and you'll get onto my mailing list where you will receive a weekly newsletter that again, gives you lots of tips, um, lots of marketing tips. You'll get to know bits about me as well because I sometimes say little bits about my life. And then you'll also be the first to know if I launch a new service or product. So we will put that in the link in the comments or somewhere below this so that you can have access. So everybody can have access to this amazing information. And if you can't find that link anywhere, just send me a message and we'll get that over to you guys. So you have a passion for this whole marketing business. Who is your ideal client? Like, who do you serve? So the reason I came up with this idea was I have quite a few friends who either have or have had their own small business. And they've said to me so many times, oh, my business would be so much more successful if I only knew how to market it properly. And I'm Mm. just like, what? So you do know how to market it properly. It's really not that hard. And, you know, I have, I've have had people who have closed down their businesses because they think they haven't known how to market it properly, which is mm, hard. That's, that's so, heartbreaking. That is. Yeah. My ideal client, I've tried to niche as much as possible because niching is really important in business um, because you need to be really specific about who you're helping. So my ideal client are busy small business owners who are looking to achieve their first six figure revenue year. So very much people like me, I haven't achieved my first six revenue year yet because I've only just started selling things and I'm still nurturing my audience. Right. So if you so what advice do you have for folks who wanting to transition from a corporate job to their own business? Yeah. What what don't you do? How about this? Instead of what to do, let's start with what what to do and what not to do. So let's start with the what nots today. So. (laughs) Yeah, the what nots to do is don't procrastinate. If you think you want to do it, do Mm -hmm. it. But don't just quit your job and think your business is going to bring in money straight away because it's not. It it does take a lot of nurturing. And like I said, your audience takes a lot of nurturing too. So you are going to have to run both at the same time. And that's hard and it's tiring. Now, I have been fortunate well, fortunate, unfortunate, I was made redundant on the 8th of January of this year. And the workplace market for me was really, really hard. So there were no jobs coming along. And that's when I thought, right, I'm just going to go for it and start up this business because what have I got to lose? I haven't got a job or an income at the moment. But then just as I made that decision, I was offered some freelancing work, which I get to do part time. So three days a week, I freelance in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, and then I work all weekend in my own business and, and Mondays and Fridays when I'm not working. Mm-hmm. I also get up at five o'clock in the morning and do work before my freelance job as well. But 
the one thing I'd say is that might sound horrendous to some people. It might sound amazing to some people, but you get to choose how you do it. So you choose your hours, you choose what you do, and you choose how quickly you build up your business. So my two, let's recap. My two not what to do is don't just quit your job straight away, but also don't procrastinate. If you want to do your set up a business, set it up. The things that you do need to do is you need to you need to streamline what you do because you're not going to be able to do everything. And that's where I come in because I really help you streamline your marketing. Mm -hmm. um, don't give up when it gets hard because it will get hard, but you'll feel like you're getting nowhere. And then all of a sudden there'll be a little win. So I kind of felt like I was banging my head against a brick wall trying to um, get opportunities to speak to other people people's audiences and then along comes Bettina and gives me a marvellous opportunity and here I am living my best life living so, your best life yeah well you mentioned well okay so you're doing all this right 5 a.m and, and we're doing this because we really want that freedom right yes. we want that freedom of choice we want that freedom to have to create that opportunity that we yeah. want to not be capped we want that time for all usually when folks go into this is because they're looking for that opportunity for blank. Yeah. And and like you mentioned, it's it's going to take a lot of time, money, and energy. Right. How do you balance all of that? That's a very good question. Sometimes I feel like I'm not balancing it. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I am. So in terms of like how I balance it. So today I've been tidying up my diary um, and it's been looking really congested. And I kind of thought, oh, I think I'm taking on more than I can chew here. So now I'm thinking, right, well, I'll, I'll do all of this, but I won't push any more for now. I'll wait until all this is out of the way and then I'll start pushing for, for more opportunities. So that's kind of how I balance it. I can make those decisions. No one else tells me how to fill my diary or how to run my diary. I get to right. choose when I put the, the accelerator on and when I put the brakes on. Um, you know, some advice that was always given me is always accelerate always accelerate and that and and i and i love that you like you're in that season right yeah. like you're like mm, i can accelerate i can like i can take my foot off the the pedal just a little bit yeah um and i see value in both right if you're always accelerating then you can choose like which way to take the momentum right like you can you can let people go. Yeah, in an ideal world, you'd always be accelerating because that's what's driving your business. But you have to look after your own mental health as well. And you have to look after your own physical health and you have to avoid burnout because if you burn out, there is no business. So actually, I don't see reducing my acceleration as a negative thing. I see that as a positive step towards Absolutely. growing your business. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, I've been the always accelerate. I've, I've been coached that way. And you mm -hmm. do, you can reach that point. There's that balance of knowing when to recover. That's um, right. Um, well, we were saying we do a mastermind every week. And one of the things I, um, I always say, my husband, who used to be a professional athlete, and they think it, everybody focuses so much on the training, on the training, on the training. And my joke was, no, he's a professional napper. Like yeah. he's a professional <laughs> recoverer That's and, right. and every athlete that plays at the highest level. I think that's, that is actually their amazing gift. They're amazing at recovering. They know when to stretch, when to roll it out, what to eat, what to not eat, how much water to eat, what the stuff off the field. Yeah. And I think that's kind of like a little bit of what you're, you're saying. It's not, it's we're accelerating and you know when to, re how to, you need to recover, That's when right. you need to recover. Yeah. And I, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I feel so guilty if I'm doing nothing. But I always say that doing nothing is actually doing something. It, it's, it's recovering your body and your mind. And I bet as you were um, preparing for your Ironman, how did that, do you think like that, that mindset really helped you with that? I think so. I, I think um, any kind of endurance sport can teach you a lot about business because it's all about strategy. It's about controlling the things you can control, realizing that you can't control everything and there are certain things that will be out of your control, but minimizing those things happening. So doing everything you can to minimize those things happening. 
And then like we've just spoken about, it's about learning when to recover and not burning yourself out as well. I believe that marketing allows us to leverage our recovery almost because it sounds like we're doing some automations in there. Like if you're post your social media and you met, you said, Hey, you don't need to be on all the platforms, just the two that yeah. your people are on. First, how do you identify all that? Your social media, unfortunately, is not about you. It's about your ideal client. So once you've identified who your ideal client is, and we're not just saying, oh, it's men and women who like buying houses, we're getting really granular. So we're saying, right, what gender are they? How old are they? What do they like doing? What? How do they make their financial decisions? All these sorts of things. And once you know who they are, just from their demographics, you'll be able to identify the two platforms where they will be. And that's all in my free guide that we mentioned earlier. Okay. So, so we've designed our avatar and then we've designed like what they love, what they like. Um, we continue to nurture them. You've set up your newsletter, email campaign. How yeah. often do you send out, how often do you recommend sending out a newsletter? Is it like once a week, once a month, every other week? What, yeah. how does that nurture process look like? So again, that really depends on ide or your ideal client and what they would like. And I've, I have got another um, little insight for you. When you go through the process of identifying your ideal client, as you start getting really, really granular and understanding who they are, there's a very high likelihood that that person is going to be a version of you. Maybe a version of you in the past, maybe a version of you in the future, but it's going to be a version of you. And once you have that light bulb moment of who they are, you will know them inside out because you know yourself. So you will know all the things they want and need. Yes. And that's funny that you say that because um, I look back my first avatar was literally a mom with 2.5 kids, a dog and a cat <laughs> living in the suburbs, driving a minivan, having a house that was that what that accommodated them, but they needed more room to breathe. Right. Yeah. And that was, I basically just described myself and yeah. my peers. And so we, that's when we found our niche, we found our people and just like you said, it didn't mean that we didn't work with others who did not fit that particular niche, but we marketed directly to them. We had a website that said moreroomtobreathe.com. Yeah. I, I felt that so wholeheartedly. Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely perfect. So in terms of your email marketing, um, like I said, so for me, I do it once a week because I personally – don't have time to read an email every day from the same person. So for me, once a week is enough. So I'm assuming that for my ideal client, who's a version of me, once a week is enough. But I just wanted to say actually how important email marketing is uh, because social, your social media platforms don't belong to you and your social media accounts can be closed down at any time and you don't have control over that, but your email platform belongs to you. That's your list. And you get to still sell to people when everything else crumbles around you. You've still got your email list to sell to people. So that's why it's so, so important. But in terms of nurturing, um, my email list has just hit. What did we say today? My email list has just hit 50 people. So when someone goes onto my email list, they get one email a day for five days, which helps them, which solves three really big problems for them in marketing and helps them to get to know me a little bit better. Then after that, you just get a weekly email. But I've not been sending out the weekly email because I didn't have enough people on my list to warrant it. But now I've hit 50. Tomorrow, I'll be sending out my first newsletter. Oh, very nice. So your news, I love that you have a plan. So your newsletter is going out once a week. Yeah. And you make sure you add, I love that you have that in that, that initial 
introduction do you do video within the email do you embed a video within the e your initial email um, i haven't yet um but i tend to put um video on so if you download my free guide say goodbye to social media stress when you get the thank you page there'll be a video of me on there because i like people to know that there is a real person behind all of this i can i can be really skeptical on sort of social media and i just think oh is this a scam what are they trying to do? So I like people to know that I'm just like a normal person sat in my home office, <laughs> still in my dog walking clothes from this morning. <laughs> not, not <looking> <laughs> <fun rest. laughs> um, and also um, for a product that I've just created, actually on the sales page, I've put a video of me because I wanted to be able to cater to the, those people that like reading stuff and those people that just like listening. And again, for them to see that this is actually a real person who's really passionate about what they've created, have worked really hard, created it and can't wait for to get it out there. And it's an opportunity for them. I think video allows folks to get to know you, get to like you and get to trust you. Just to say, there was one reason why I haven't been putting videos in my emails was because I didn't want them to look too spammy. So I didn't want them to start hitting spam filters. So I've kept them really plain text. I haven't used images, haven't used videos. And then once people are sort of getting my address into their address book, so it doesn't sort of go into junk, then I'll start putting in sort of more marketing. Oh, type stuff. I love that strategy. Just keep it super simple at first. Yeah. yeah. And then once they, so any other tips to stay out of spam? Yeah, be careful how many emojis you use. Uh, I, I haven't used any in my initial nurturing emails. So just be careful with the number of emojis that you use. And oh, think... golly, I'm an emoji queen. <laughs> I mean, I, I do but like how emojis. How do I convey my emotions? Like, I need hand signals. I know, I do like emoji, but you just need to be careful. Try not to use swear words. Try not to use That's reasonable. anything too that. rude. <laughs> think about your subject lines as well. So don't make them sound too spammy. So like things like loads of question marks and loads of exclamation marks can be a bit spammy too. Here's I a top tip for exclamation you. exclamation marks. Yeah, be careful with those. So I've got another top tip. I'm just giving it all away in this, this interview. When you pose your subject line as a question, that often gets more open than if you don't pose it as a question because that person then wants to answer the question and they need to read the email to help them answer it. Ah, that's lovely. I love that. Um, well, we have covered so much today. We have. I know. I loved it. Oh, <laughs> There's good. so much more I could tell you as well. <laughs> well, okay. What else? What else? Would, that was going to be my question. What have we not covered what that you're not like, covered? you know what? I wish I could have shared this because this is such incredible value. And I know mm -hmm. that um, folks can also go on your site and get that because that'll be systematically laid out that they can follow. Yeah. So what we've not really covered is that for easy, streamlined, effective marketing, you need to put down some solid foundations for that marketing first. There's probably too much for me to go into in this one sentence, but it does include things about your niche, your ideal client, the problem you're solving and lots of other different things. And I've actually created a product. So I said this year I wasn't going to sell anything. My business goal was literally just to add value. But then um, somebody said to me, oh, you should do it. Just have a go because it's good practice. So I created this product. Um, I didn't expect to sell anything because I haven't nurtured my audience. And to be fair, I've only sold one, but that's absolutely fine because I've learned so much from the experience of launching it. But this product is how to master your marketing in 30 days. And you get what happens is you sign up for the product. It's only £49.99 British pounds. So it's really low ticket. And you get one email per day, which gives you one solid action per day that helps you to lay down the solid foundations for marketing. So by the end of the 30 days, if you've been good and done your homework, <laughs> if you've done everything I've Oh, you, you mean I have to put in the work? You have to put in a little bit of work, but it's one doable action a day. Um, you will have, by the end of the 30 days, you will have the solid foundation. So every time you go to do some marketing, 
you won't have the massive thought process of what do I need to say, how do I need to say it, and how do I make it look? Because you will already know because you've already laid down those foundations. And I absolutely love this product. I think it's the biggest value you could have for your business is to, to do these 30 steps. And I wanted to make it really accessible, which is why I put it on at such a low ticket price. Oh, well, thank you for that. And um, this is exciting. And I want to say thank you so much for taking time to fill our buckets. And I don't know if you know the story, if you saw on our site, um, the concept of our all-star, but I'll share with you right now. Okay. So I believe that everybody goes through life on this journey, just like yeah. you and I have. And yeah. we collect these buckets. And for so many of us, some of our buckets are empty, some are kind of full, some are full, and some are overflowing. Yeah. And what I've discovered, like, in, is like so many people, they want to give from a bucket that's full or empty or that's not overflowing. And then after they keep doing, they do that, and then they find they're they're just empty. Yeah. So, but if we can all get in the habit in our community to give from our overflowing buckets, then those of us who aren't full in that bucket can just bring our bucket over to you in the marketing section and start filling our buckets in that overflow yeah. section. And you have another area that's not overflowing, right? And you start filling your bucket and not stop when it's full, but keep going till it's overflowing. And if we're all doing this, then we all have all of these overflowing buckets. And now we have an over com a community with overflowing buckets that just keeps growing and giving and growing and giving. I absolutely love that. Yeah. I, I mean, some really sort of um, supportive and nurturing online communities myself, but I absolutely love the whole bucket analogy. In the UK, we have a saying, which is fill your boots, but fill your buckets is good as well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I appreciate you so much for taking time to visit today. And I just wanted to say thank you for everything that you've shared and filling uh, our buckets. That's my absolute pleasure. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who's listened. And I hope that I've been of value to you. You absolutely have.